Ben McKee or Patrick Brown here on campus, Go Vols 24-7, with our no huddle following Josh Heifel meeting with the media here on Monday afternoon to kick off Chattanooga week. We've officially made it to, to we've been in football season with camp, but we, we've officially made it uh, to, to game week. And uh, the, the talk today on campus is the depth chart, Patrick, that we received after Josh Heifel spoke, Squirrel White spoke, Javante Spragans, Andre Turrentine, and uh, th this depth chart, this piece of paper, I've never seen the word or on a piece of paper as many times as we saw today. Yeah, I don't I don't know if this is this response was on Twitter or it was on, on the checkerboard of 24-7, but it was like, this isn't a depth chart, this is just a list of everybody on the team. And it pretty much is. Uh, this is Ryan Callahan, Mass, so take it at face value, but he said there were 34 ors on the roster. Uh, there's, what, 29 starting positions, offense, defense, special teams, and I think there are uh, six starters locked in. One of Nico, obviously. Cooper Mays and Javante Spragans on the offensive line. Jackson Ross is a starter at two positions. Punter and punter and holder. And then Josh Turbyville is the kickoff specialist. Not James Pierce Jr. Not James Pierce. Not Dylan Simpson. Not Lance Hurd. Not Lance Hurd. <laughs> it's uh, not Brew. It, it, or Squirrel. It, it was interesting. And on a serious note, like. I know media members love, and, and I say this as a media member, but media members love to get their, their feathers ruffled over these kind of things. But like, I think it, it's hilarious. If I'm Josh Heupel, I'm doing the same thing right. in the transfer portal era. Yeah, and, and a lot of times you, you see some of these things bracketed because you don't want a guy seeing something on social media, oh, I'm second string, I'm a backup, and then they get mad about it, maybe their parents get mad about it, maybe they slack off in their game prep, and then the guy who does start turns an ankle in the first series and you got a guy in that maybe hasn't been as sharp as he needs to be so uh, there's there's some there's some value in it for sure um, and it's fun that we get to talk about it and dissect it and kind of laugh, laugh at it yeah and you'll have a piece up on the site later this afternoon uh, trying to dissect uh, the, this, sense the, it, yes. this this bunch of oars uh, or you might decide to do other work we'll see what you decide to do this afternoon uh, in terms of Josh Heifel speaking to the media not a whole lot there either uh, he's talked a million times at this point uh, not really much to say, uh, and I thought he summed it up perfectly with his first yeah. sentence. Glad that talking season is over. Excited to play some football this weekend. Yeah, and, and this is the, you know, it, it's, it's there. Game week is here. He, he wants his team. Probably the most interesting thing he said now that I'm thinking about it is just how much he, you know, he, he gave a message to his veterans today. He said, hey, we need you to show the way, show our young players that maybe haven't been through a game week how we go about things on Monday, how we do things on Tuesday, what the routine is like, because you know they did a mock game last, mock game week last week, but this is you know, this is the real thing now. So um, that was probably one of the bigger takeaways for me is that you know, counting on this team's leadership, leaning on this team's leadership. He said he went to a leader in each position room and said, hey, this is what I need from you this week. And uh, I think that's a good approach to try to make sure that everybody's locked in. You know, Chattanooga is a top 10 team at the FCS level. Um, this isn't a, a marquee opener per se, but uh, you can't overlook anybody. I mean, just look at week zero. It was one big upset, and then a couple of big underdogs took, took the favorites to the wire. So uh, you got to be locked in. you got to be prepared to play, and, and that's what that's what Hyper wants from this team. And he's counting on the team's leadership to sort of carry that message along, as he put it, when the coaches aren't around. Yeah, Hypo fielded a lot of questions about Nico, and the common theme, uh, or to summarize, is that looking ahead to this weekend in the opener, his first home start, mm -hmm. he just really wants to see Nico play clean football. Yeah. Uh, beyond the box score operation of the offense, communication within the offense. He, he just wants things to, to run smoothly, which is stating the obvious. Yeah, he wants them to take care of the football, manage the offense. It's funny to hear him sort of say some of those things. He did say at the end that I answered, like, okay, when the, when the present, uh, chance presents itself, go make a play. But listen to Joey Halsey talk last week. He's like, you got to let this guy go out there and cut it loose and play because that's when he's his best. So <laughs> interesting thing there. It'll be fun to watch Nico. I think he... Uh, will be in, is in for a great season, but as, as Heupel pointed out, he is a young quarterback. He's going through everything for the first time, so how he responds, how he handles things, how he bounces back from an interception or a three and out, we're all gonna find. We're gonna find how that that goes because it's it's one thing when you're starting in a bowl game, it's sort of a one off, but it's different when it, you're you're the guy and this is your team. Yep, Tennessee will be in action on Saturday inside of Neyland Stadium at 12.45 p.m. Eastern on the SEC Network. In the meantime, we'll be back over here on campus tomorrow. I believe it's Darrell Sims and William N. speaking to the media along with players. And we've got all the Tennessee football coverage you need at GoVols247.com leading up until kickoff on Saturday. He's Patrick Brown or I'm Ben McKee. We don't know.